pick a card, the skeletons in their closet. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you at your reading. Hi friends, my name is Chris with Psychic MD and I'm here to do another pick a card reading. Now this time I've actually chosen some pictures that I personally took of <laughs> the little skeleton guys right here. So I was just having a little fun and I took the photos myself. So those are going to be what you pick from and I'll leave that in a little picture. And you can read the description box below and find that quickly. And for the rest of you that like to stay for the intention portion, this is what we're doing, okay? Today we're going to be reading all about the skeletons, the skeletons in their closet. So yep, the skeletons in their closet, whoever they are, that is what we're going to be checking out today. But also, I would like to explore what they're trying to teach us as well. So... Let's get a little, little smoky smoke going. Not that kind of smoke, but this kind. And for those of you new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. For those of you that are repeat offenders, I really appreciate your support. Ooh, so pretty. This should be pretty ready. I hope everyone is doing well. Tis the season, right? So skeletons in their closet. The intention is to really get out of your mind whatever it is that you are thinking to see if there's any merit to it. So we're gonna do your energy check, basically who are you and who are you inquiring about? Then that will confirm what your pile is Next, we're going to move on to what do you think is being hidden? The next question is going to be what's the truth about what they're actually hiding? So this should confirm your gut feeling or give you more information. And last but not least, what is this trying to teach you? Okay. So again, you'll be picking from pile one, two, or three. And I will see you at your pile. Please make your selection now and know that pile number one has quite a bit of coughing. Hi, pile one. My name is Crystal with Psychic MD. If you missed the intro, and if you did not miss it, it's still the same name. Hope everyone is doing well. Pile number one, the skeleton in their closet. This is all about that. So we're going to get a little bit more smoke here because why not? And we're gonna find out the skeletons in their closet. Now I had to put extra leaves down simply because there was a lot of glare from the overhead lighting and yeah, that happened. All right guys, the skeletons in their closet. Let's do your energy check first. Energy check, we're gonna be utilizing today the Alchemical Visions Tarot. got a little anatomy going on and they're impossible to shuffle super exciting pile one what is their energy check pile number one who is pile number one plans the ten of swords what is going on pile number one <clears throat> so first of all I feel like you have been through the ringer you have been through it, Fred, for sure. I feel like you could have been, you could have experienced a lot of betrayals, a lot of heartache, a lot of people judging you unchar uncharacteristically harshly. That was awkward, but yeah. I feel like this has shaken your foundation. It makes you kind of feel like not only are you betrayed, but you are subject like anybody can just kind of walk by and betray you. I feel like your level of trust is nil. Like just as good as this man is laying down here, 
with his arms outstretched, that is your trust level and below that, okay? And with good reason, this isn't about feeling victimized or feeling like whatever. This is about evaluating your life in a certain way to the point that you're not only overly cautious, but the walls are so high. I mean, even look at these walls are so high. You don't trust anybody. <clears throat> Now, I kind of want to address here because this to me always looks like a number four and you could have had like four major, I want to say categories of betrayal, four areas in your life that just really went south unexpectedly or things that you thought would turn out differently or things you never expected. Okay. And those were fundamental to you. <clears throat> Pardon me. You could have a problem with speaking, speaking your truth with your throat chakra and I don't know if this is like amandible right here because I do see teeth kind of interesting. It's split in half and it appears almost like they're <clears throat> almost like joined holding hands or something like that. Right. And look at the flames. So I'm going to say that, yeah, speaking your truth has been really difficult. Um, you could be someone who experienced a lot of terror. I, mean, I heard terror. I went to say trauma and I heard terror. So maybe perhaps you're. Um, background is someone who endured a lot of terror and um, experienced a lot of people coming and going and cycling through your life for some reason, right? So, excuse me. <clears throat> if this is you, then stay tuned to your pile. I'm not sure how these cards are going to land because there's a lot going on here. Pile number one, <clears throat> who are you inquiring about? I would like to get, I would like to get some messages about who pile number one is inquiring about. Energy check for pile number one. We just want to make sure we're viewing the correct pile. Who are you inquiring about, please? The six of pentacles. Who? Oh, you know, I'm just not fond. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. So you're inquiring about someone who, who gave to many different people. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are single, but the skeleton in their closets, this is about somebody that gave to you and gave to other people. I heard popcorn, but what I meant was breadcrumbing. So this is somebody that you could be really tangled up in your mind about. And I'm looking at the sloping hills behind this person. Um, I feel like this person is entitled. This person just expects, has expectations. And even here, it's almost like they idolize money or, yeah, their coin, their pinnacle. Um, maybe even more so than you. And with the books being cut off here, I feel like this person isn't necessarily somebody who experienced a um, formal education. I personally don't think that's a bad thing. I'm kind of neutral about it, I guess. But I also feel like this person does not seek out knowledge, okay? They're just sort of like stoic, like this is how it is and this is how it is. Bam, that's it. They could also um, profess to have... <clears throat> feelings for you or they could have pictures of you in their home just kind of to say oh well you know this is how I feel about this person I, I always look after them but they are like they kind of hoard resources hoard money I think that they're sly about it and um, you are definitely not you're a tool I'm and I don't mean that like that Ooh. Pile number one. So you're a tool in that they want to utilize you as a tool, not like pile number one. That was wild. So literally, I choked. <clears throat> Major coughing fit. So I feel like when you get around this person or the effect that this person has on you is <clears throat> that you cannot speak your truth for sure. I feel like they want to stifle and crush pretty much every truth that you have to the point where you are actually timid around them or you don't want to question it. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. And also pile number one, I feel like this person is somebody who demands respect and demands a title. <clears throat> Excuse me. Almost like I'm the Baron. You're going to call me the Baron, kiss the ring or whatever. <clears throat> and I have the books right here being cut off. So 
they put no work into it. It's just strictly entitlement. So I feel like that's who you're inquiring about. For a lot of you guys, <clears throat> I feel like this is a parent <clears throat> or someone in your family, that kind of a thing. Even it could be like a husband or, <clears throat> pardon me, someone like that. And for others of you, <clears throat> it's somebody that you dated, okay? A little bit more information. I've got the hermit. Okay, it could be a Virgo. Or somebody who um, withdrew, disappeared maybe, went and did some introspection. Okay. <clears throat> Queen of Wands. I feel Call like this number person, one. a lot of stop and goes. You could have had a history of a lot of stop and goes. False starts with this person. Also, <clears throat> this person I feel like could have had another lover or another person. Sometimes the queen of wands is a glamorous queen or somebody that they find like <clears throat> more alluring or they just decide to run off with. I don't know what the thing is, but <clears throat> there's a lot of time here. And right here I'm getting like pegando lo cuerno that to, uh, means in Spanish like uh, two timing. <clears throat> wow, strong energy here. But anyways, I definitely feel like um, this person, and if that's not the case, by the way, this person could see you as the one who is alluring and also needing to be controlled, almost like they want to put you on a leash, that kind of a thing. <clears throat> Pound number one, excuse my old man coughs and like, seriously, I was fine until I started doing your pile. So <clears throat> here we are. The Eight of Wands, okay? I feel like this person could have been lured and had a romance with somebody else and left you out in the cold, but yet demands everything from you. Um, and that could have been part of the betrayal. So this person could have had some of those characteristics. And the judgment, yep. <clears throat> I feel like those are fall from grace. I feel like this is, and this, like, like your ship totally sunk. Everything was unexpected and... Um, <clears throat> I feel like the form of betrayal was something that you never expected. So some of you, they maybe took your kids for others of you. They <clears throat> took your home or moved out or something to that effect. Okay. So if that describes your, <clears throat> the person that you're inquiring about, stick around if I don't die choking first, which I'm sure some people would love. <clears throat> goodness all right what do you think is being hidden pile number one what do you think is being hidden about the skeletons in their closet pile one what do you think is being hidden from you <clears throat> the four of cups they're bored they're bored they're in an incompatible relationship and if they're not in a relationship they feel like Everything and everyone around them is incompatible and they kind of don't want it. We have a zombie with a human. It doesn't make a lot of sense. <clears throat> what do you think is going on behind your back or the skeletons in their closet, please? <clears throat> the eight of wands. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> a lot of messages back and forth, a lot of a lot of texting, sexting, or <clears throat> if this is a platonic relationship, <clears throat> then I feel like this is somebody who, um, it's almost like, okay, I'm going to zombie, I'm going to come get you. It's almost like they are messaging everybody and they're on the attack for some reason and you know about it like this is messages back and forth and maybe trying to get information maybe trying to give information a lot of gossip that kind of a thing what else the seven of swords are sneaking around behind your back um yeah they're basically playing with the dead with basically issues and people that you just don't really give a rat's bleep about you don't care I feel like this person can be trying to stir things up 
without your knowledge. <clears throat> I promise you, my readings are not always coughing and hacking. This is wild. Three of Cups. <clears throat> so Three of Cups, this talks to me about maybe partying, maybe drinking, maybe overindulging, maybe just having a good time. This person can be, you know, with the Three of Cups, sometimes they get like third party. <clears throat> but again, if it's platonic, this could be overindulging and just out to have drinks with people, hanging out at bars or whatever, you know, their choice <clears throat> of drug is. And it's interesting because I feel like they're just like wasting time talking about you, bringing you up in every conversation. It does make a lot of sense. I am going to pull these. And we're going to look at what is the truth that they are actually hiding. Pile one, what's the truth that they're actually hiding? What's being hidden? All about the skeletons in their closet. The person that pile number one is inquiring about the skeletons in their closet. Oh, that one just wanted to come out. Yeah, <clears throat> this is the emperor. This is my way or the highway. I'm hunting you. I'm on a hunt. I am a, what do they call that? A globetrotter? <clears throat> it's almost like they, um, yeah, this isn't my first rodeo almost. I will hunt you down no matter where. You can run, you cannot hide. For those of you that are like in abusive relationships or situationships, things like that, you got to be real careful. <clears throat> Everything these days leaves a digital imprint, right? <clears throat> but I definitely feel like this person is on the hunt and they are focused. They're not giving up. So, <clears throat> oh my gosh. What is the truth about what they're actually hiding? Oh my gosh. What are they actually hiding? Yep. They kind of want to abandon everything and come after you. So, with a um, person like in separation or <clears throat> in hermit mode, this could be stating that if you went into hermit mode that they want to come after you. If they went into hermit mode, they are ready to kind of hunt you down, which is really ominous. What else is going on here? What is the truth about what pile number one's person with a platonic romantic that they're inquiring about? What are they hiding? What are the skeletons in their closet, please? They feel left out. Oh, family inheritance. Ooh. <clears throat> okay. This is all ice. I feel like somebody feels left out, but with all of this money being featured here, you could be not privy to an inheritance. So, for example, if somebody passed, I feel like this person could have like wrangled some of that money for themselves or convinced them to sign a will in a different way, shape, or form. Or, <clears throat> yep, this person is focused on that money and icing you out of the whole thing. So I don't know how this like fits. This could be trying to bamboozle you out of a home if you have a home together, whatever the case may be, I think you get the idea. So if you had that in the back of your mind, they're like, oh, they're trying to, you know, <clears throat> steal me, steal stuff from me or get me out of my home or steal my inheritance that, you know, whoever wanted to leave you or did leave you, then that's what they're hiding. Um, for, some, for a lot of you guys, I feel like this has already been done. So if only if it's been on your heart that you've been feeling like this is a thing for you and it's been on your mind, it is no coincidence that you stuck through this pile. And I'd be surprised if any of y'all are still here with all my coughing. <clears throat> but here we are. So they are, they are digging for information relentless. And I feel like they will ask anybody and everybody. They will cloak and shield themselves in order to gain more information about you. So it looks like maybe you cut off or blocked or... <clears throat> yeah, uh, they don't have access for you. Maybe you blocked them on uh, social media. Maybe you moved away, that kind of a thing. But this person wants to elevate, levitate, and be privy to everything about you. And that is, I, I don't even feel like it's a secret, but <clears throat> I feel like that's being hidden from you. What has been hidden from you? What's a skeleton? What skeletons are in their closet? <clears throat> 
they could be doing readings on you. They could be even consulting a widget board or another tarot reader. They could be listening to YouTube as well, or simply um, having readings done about you. Yeah. And they have to choose. They have to choose which way to go. Like they have the option right here to make a decision. Do they go towards the past or towards the future? And what to do about it. And I feel like there's some indecision. And like to know a little bit more about this Ten of Pentacles. This particular Ten of Pentacles. Why is this here for Pile 1, please? What is being hidden? Yeah. Wow. Six of Swords. So typically this is about moving away from <clears throat> rocky waters. Right? And look at all of this. It looks like the ship has sank. I mean, you only see like a ghost of a ship back here. It's almost like everybody's trying to jump ship. So I feel like whatever the case may be, um, it is time to pay the piper. If this person stole from you or bamboozled somebody into giving them what pertains to you, I feel like they know and it's, it, it's tumultuous. It is a time for them to pay the piper. Um, it's going to be found out what they've done. Six of wands. Yep. And I feel like you're going to be, I heard the word exalted. Okay. Um, I feel like in some ways you're going to be vindicated in some ways. Yeah. You're manifesting, you're manifesting. And I'm not talking about revenge. Pile number one, if you're even still here, that was a really rough reading to sit through. But <clears throat> if you did, thank you. Um, I'm going to say that, you know, with the Six of Wands, this is about being celebrated. This is about being publicly acknowledged. So this could have been somebody who tried to steal your fortune or your inheritance. Um, yeah, anything like that. And other people are going to see that. And I feel like you are getting on your dark horse, okay? And you are riding into the night. I think that that just to me represents freedom. I think that you are right on the brink of a discovery and things are going to bring, people are going to bring things to you into the light. Okay. So if this is about inheritance that you feel in your gut that has been hidden or manipulated. Okay. Then we have the magician here. So this is you manifesting, you manifesting as above, so below you being <clears throat> absolutely focused, laser focused as well. But what you're being laser focused on is being established. I heard being wealthy. Yeah, well, it could go back to money, guys. Um, I feel like you have all of the tools in order to manifest what it is that you need. And right now you need clarity, you need truth. And this needs to be brought out into the open. And I do feel like it will be. Now I wanted to say I do fear it will be. So some of you guys could be feeling nervous about that. But in the end, this isn't about you. And it isn't even about the money. It is about the um, <clears throat> justice being done. And <coughs> <clears throat> I mean, not choking to death, hopefully. Wow, that was so attractive. Um, I feel like, yeah, this is going to leave you in a better place. I also feel like, you know, you've done everything alone. Typically, you know, when wealthy people have like a butler or somebody to go ahead and answer the door. And it appears to me like, you know, you've handled all of these things yourself, perhaps because, um, you know, this inheritance has been taken away from you or it's been stalled or it's been blocked or hidden. There's a air of secrecy, but it's about to come to light. Yeah. And I feel like you're going to be put back into your proper place. So if you've been struggling and battling with finances and this is your story, other people know about it. And I feel like other people are ready to boycott this person who has been selfish and only looking after their own interests. Now, <clears throat> that was the truth of what they're hiding. Now we're going to look at what is this trying to teach you? Because to me, that's almost the most important thing here. In spite of everything else, what, for pile number one, what is this trying to teach, pile number one, please? What is this teaching, pile number one? Wow. Radical change, trust in radical change, trust in the process. Um, <clears throat> this is nothing, nothing done can be hidden. Everything will be exposed. I feel like even with the red hand right here, um, I feel like this person is being caught red handed. And what is, 
what this is trying to teach you basically is to really learn how to get centered and manifest that regardless of what goes on around us. And let me tell you, I well understand why this would, you know, put somebody in a topsy turvy because not only is an element of like personal betrayal and familial betrayal, um, and the levels are, I mean, I feel like somebody can go to prison for this to jail, um, at least. And I, I just feel like even in that, it's like beyond comprehension. It's almost like saying, you know, I would have shared this with you, but I feel like with this, it is a number 13, by the way, Friday is coming up. So Friday the 13th is coming up. This could be significant to you. Um, I feel like this is going to change your life. It's going to change how you see things. Also, I feel like it's going to change them as well, because, you know, if you stick your hand in fire, it's going to get burned. And people are about to find this out, okay? So I feel like maybe if you've been teetering on like major change or trusting yourself or trusting um, the process, <clears throat> I heard due process. This could have to go to court litigation, all of it, all of it. Then um, trust that, you know, it's being brought out and a lot of things will be exposed. And I feel like it's a forever going to change you, forever changing you. What? Now, even though this is the King of Cups right here, I always feel like this is justice, maybe because of the wings. So there could be an element of like somebody wanting to bring you emotional, uh, <clears throat> emotional words, like flowery words and, oh, I love you and this and that, and I never meant any harm or whatever the case may be. But I still have a lot of vibes of that justice, okay? Um, coming through to balance things out and put things back into proper order. So, <clears throat> yep. And look, bottom of the deck, I have the Six of Pentacles. And this is really radical from the first Six of Pentacles that we saw. I don't want to drag this out any longer. I apologize for all the choking and dying behind the camera. But I'm going to say that this is putting you back into kind of a balance and um, you know, it doesn't have to be us necessarily pushing for justice. Sometimes it can be, but I think that even spirit, because of her, um, white dress, I feel like you have an air about you that, you know, it's not about the money for you. It's not about this. It's about relationships and the deception. And, um, I feel like you are looked upon it with high honor and the fact that, um, she's right here, even extend, extending her hand to these rats. <laughs> This is almost stating, you know, all of these rats that betrayed me um, that we saw that were kind of milling around in a circle with this big card earlier. I would have even been generous with all of those rats. But now this is out of your hands. I feel like this is not going to be in your hands. It's not necessarily going to be something I feel like it's going to be brought forward for whatever reason. It's going to be, I just saw 1212, brought forward. Um, in such a manner that, yeah, it concerns you. Yeah, you'll be involved, obviously. But this is spirit-led. Last card I have for you is the number nine. So this is, you know, trusting in yourself, your own two feet, being able to balance things out regardless, but also being a good gardener and seeing what you can build with your hands. A lot of us, myself included, have made things out of nothing. Um, and, you know, we just get resourceful. They say necessity, <clears throat> isn't it necessity is a mother, the invention, the mother of invention. That's what it is. Necessity is a mother of invention. So if you have a need, you know, you're going to figure out a way how to make it happen. So right here with the nine of pentacles, I do feel like money is coming to you. I do feel like also you are, you're not focused on that. You're focused on growing your own. Um, yeah, I feel like you have a deep divine connection with spirit right here. And you may have some really unusual hobbies, but I feel a lot of peace coming towards you. And I feel almost like Lazarus, just you raising up from the dead. Okay, so that is what I have for you. Please do let me know if this was your pile. I am so sorry about all the choking, um, but it is what it is. And much love to you. Please do like, share, comment, subscribe. Until the next reading, namaste. Hi, pal two. My name is Chris Salwood, Psychic MD. If you missed the intro, it's still the same name, by the way, if you did not. Welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new, welcome, welcome. 
And for you repeat offenders, thank you for sticking by me. Much appreciated. We're going to get some clean energy out here. Pile number one was rough. I mean, I literally choked so much that uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have to do heavy edits. And, um, you know, it's going to be hope for the best. That's it. Anyways, pile number two, if you chose the second skeleton, pile number two. This message is for you. All about the skeletons and their closet. Pile number two, who are you? I heard who is you. Now, pile number two, first thing that I'm getting um, <clears throat> energetically is I feel like you're kind of spunky. I feel like you're spunky. You're a little bit like in the loop, in the know. I feel like you could be big into social media. Um, <clears throat> maybe... I don't know, Rumble, Twitter, TikTok. I feel like you know all of the little buzzwords. I feel like you have Riz, first of all, right? So who is pile number two, please? Oh, I got two. Okay. I meant to get one. The page of coins. <clears throat> get that on camera. We have the page of coins and we have ace. What is going on? Entrepreneur much? You could be uh, somebody who was born in the year of dragon. You could be somebody who really is slow and methodical and checks all their facts. You could check the calendar and horoscopes and <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> any kind of energy checks that you deem fit. Maybe even with the moon cycles and things like that. Before you start anything, um, you definitely count the cost. You could make lists. I mean, I feel like definitely methodical. You may not be the fastest person in the world, but it doesn't matter. You are definitely methodical. Look at that flame going. Going, going. Next, we have the Ace of Coins. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like you do a lot of homework, but you are really somebody who is very earthy, very focused on your money. Um, even the fact that this person's like pointing and it's like, look, this is my investment. Now, for some reason, I'm feeling like these look like binoculars. I know that's not what it's supposed to be, but um, it definitely has that vibe to it. You could be somebody who loves, like to me, this looks like the misc and where I'm standing at right now. Um, today was a beautiful day, incredibly beautiful. It was kind of not stormy, but a little rainy and foggy. So you could be somebody who loves a fog or has an affinity with fog or somebody who comes, oh, don't burn my cards. Okay. Or somebody who um, was born somewhere where it's really foggy. And I also feel like this is like making your own way. So I feel like, yeah, you definitely prep, you pack your lunch. I mean, you are methodical. So if this describes you, then let me do a quick energy check on the person that you're inquiring about. Pile number two. Woo wee. <clears throat> Who's pile number two inquiring about? The skeletons in their closet. The skeletons in their closet. Who is this person that pile number two wants to know about, please? The Eight of Pentacles. <laughs> This could be maybe about a boss. This could be about a mentor. This could be somebody at work. This could be somebody who is a scholar. Who's diligent. This is a hard worker. This is somebody who puts their nose to the grindstone. This is somebody who really works so hard that sometimes hours fly by and they don't even notice. This is somebody also who comes home and probably puts a lot of thought into how they can kind of promote or advance or change or improve their own job. This is also somebody who can sketch or write. Oh, that candle's bleeding all over my really pretty leaves. Not like I can't get more, but hello. <clears throat> yep. Pile number two, if you're liking these kind of readings, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'm going to confess. I am that person who picks up leaves. Huh. 
the person that you are inquiring about also could have a lot of options. Now, immediately, I've never drawn this card from this deck before. This is the Edgar Allan Poe deck. And I'm kind of observing, you know, the Seven of Cups is about dreaming, about a little bit of fantasy and things like that. Maybe they could even be full of hot air, not ready to launch, failure to launch a little bit. This could be somebody who works so much that they never even bothered to move out of their home. <clears throat> or even somebody who is living with an ex-spouse because they just don't care enough to do any moves because all they focus on is work. Um, but what caught my eye right here is this eyeball right here immediately. So I'm going to say that this person maybe could have their eye on you or vice versa. And it appears that even the moon is coming out of this cup. So it's almost like you don't know how this person feels or thinks about you or something or what options they have. So Paul number two, if that is familiar to you, then hang in there. We're going to get a little bit more information. Okay. So what do you think they're hiding? Pile number two, the skeletons in their closet. What are they hiding? What is this person hiding? I feel like it's, again, a person from work or at work or somebody that you have to work with in some way, shape, and form. The skeletons in their closet. What do you think is being hidden, please? Four of Wands. Well, look at that. This is about a firm foundation. This is about setting up shop. Maybe you feel like this person can be running an enterprise or wanting to kind of perfect and hone this skill so they can go elsewhere and execute, um, you know, whatever it is that they are doing. I heard performance. This... Obviously, this card is very ritualistic. This person, you could feel like maybe they are very ritualistic. And maybe you feel like this person um, could be doing some spell work and things like that. I heard the word binding. I don't know. So that could be part of it. But for others of you, well, even this person is almost like, yeah, <clears throat> almost like sacrifice right here. Interesting. Let's look some more. This person could sacrifice a lot. They could sacrifice themselves for work. What's the truth? Oh, hi. What do you think they're hiding? This jumped. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm like, what is this though? It's almost like the Ace of Pentacles being echoed once again. <laughs> So we only have the one pentacle right here and this is like manifesting oh it's a knight okay sorry so this still is i feel like somebody who takes their time they could have familiars with a bird and the two kitties here they could have pets they could really be drawn to animals or very close to the spirit world and actually um <clears throat> i did pull a um Bottom of the deck I looked before and I happened to get the high priestess. So this person could be very much connected to spirit. Hmm. Well, and this person can have a dream. Look at that. So with the three of swords, this is like, this is what I desire. I have a wish upon a star that kind of a thing. And I have a desire that I don't want to give up. Maybe I worked really hard to, um, you know, get this desire type of thing, but they're submerged even in water. This person can at times feel emotional to you. Um, but also I feel like you could be thinking that this person might turn around, like betray you at the last minute. It's almost like they have desires and a lot of options and, and they're all about work, 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 but they'll turn around and like, you know, cut you in order to get what they want. So that level of betrayal, this person put a stake through her heart um yeah that's not good so with the three of swords there's almost like you anticipating some kind of a betrayal with this person or this work situation which obviously that's not good i'm going to remove these and we're going to look at the next thing which is what are they really hiding And again, let me know, you guys, if you're liking these kind of readings. It's a little bit ambiguous. I enjoy doing them, but if it's not of interest, 
honestly, I'll probably still do them, but I would rather pick something that you are interested in and you can always put a suggestion. I'm all about that. So let us look at what's the truth about what they're actually hiding. What are they actually hiding? Pile number two, the skeletons in their closet. What is this person at work actually hiding, please? What are they actually hiding? What skeletons are in their closet? The truth about this person. Okay. I'm going to say that this person is a natural giver. They are fair. They want to kind of elevate other people in spite of, you know what? And they might give too many people too many chances. And you might notice that also. Like, even though you're kind of like, what the heck? And you're having these fears of betrayal um, and other stuff going on, maybe because of past ones. This person is actually like a giver. So tell me more about this person, please. What's the truth that they're actually hiding? They've given to bad situations before that they do regret now. What else, please? King of Pentacles here. Yeah, so this person, they are wealthy. They do really well for themselves. They sit on their throne. And I feel like, you know, this person is almost like I can fight my own battles, that kind of a thing. So they're not afraid to roll up their sleeves, which is what we saw with the Eight of Pentacles hard at work, right? But uh, this person's not flashy. They're not going to drive maybe the latest and greatest. And they're not going to have the nicest threads. And you could probably walk right by them anywhere, even at church. And you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, nothing spectacular, exciting. I don't feel like they wear the latest brands or buy the latest bags either. Um, I feel like they live a very modest life and they're very generous with other people. I'm actually liking this. What is the truth? What are they actually hiding plans for pile two? What? Yeah, they're pretty intuitive as well. I feel like they're intuitive, um, but they could also see you as intuitive as well. And something about that, like there's, I've never noticed this. It's almost like a net or a cage. It's almost like the moon is being controlled or caged. Okay. And, uh, I feel like what they're hiding. No, I almost feel like this is more how they view you. What they're hiding is they see you in this energy. Maybe perhaps they feel like you are definitely gifted and yeah, they could have some intuition as well, but nothing compared to what they think you have or how they esteem you to be as far as your intuition goes, because you're coming across as a high priestess. I feel also like you um, are being seen by this person as you don't share very much. There's a lot of knowledge and that you have somehow some way captured the energy of the moon so that you're not really affected, but you could kind of unveil and reveal what is going on behind the scenes. You can, yeah, because this is secrets and she who knows or he who knows, right? So I feel like part of them, they're hiding that they really think that you are super gifted, that you could uncover and unveil anything. And that's a little bit intimidating, frankly. It's a little bit like attractive, but a little bit scary out at once. Okay, what's the truth about this person? The skeletons in their closet for pile two, please. Skeletons in their closet. It's actually really good energy so far. Okay. So we have the Knight of Wands here. This person, um, I feel like they want to take action and they have like a passion, a desire. And it could be maybe this is somebody who has multiple businesses and they're scouting you for business or perhaps even that. Uh, wow, this is like with is it sonic hearing? I always. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's with a, you know, their bat ears. They have their ear to the ground. They have their finger on the pulse and they know when to make a move. Um, and nothing really escapes their attention. This person has their own intuition, but I feel like <laughs> I heard they have spies. They, you know, could be other coworkers and stuff kind of listening and reporting back to them and um, just kind of seeing how things go. I don't know why they would. What else? Okay, so we have the Knight of Cups here. 
And I feel like this person could be really emotional and a little bit self-protective because they've been giving to the wrong people. Now, in this space, they've had a lot of changes. And with this, like, negative space, butterflies in color, I mean, I'm going to say that uh, this person kind of sees... themselves undergoing a lot of transformation and they have a lot of emotion but they've been through so much that they don't want to just kind of blow up towards you okay but I feel like this could be even like a job offer like let's kind of I don't know I don't feel like it's bad at all okay what else what's up what is up look this is yes look at how wild these cards are look at my card pile number two sorry I digress here, but the, you know, with the Ace of Wands right here, and this is just about lighting that fire, that passion, that excitement. For some of you, your boss or somebody you work with is very interested in you physically, sexually, um, especially because the High Priestess is here. Uh, yeah, that's major like exotic attraction. Uh, but for the rest, this is just like confirming what I just said it's like do we have the same passion because you know I want to open up this business or I want to raise you up or something to that effect and then I have here I'm going to move slow and methodical you know because I care about you know my resources my money and this is echoing look at all like the feathers I think on her hair so I feel like they do have a divine guidance and they have familiars around them and they are connected to spirit but it's very earthy and quite different from how you experience life. So I think all of that is actually really good. If you get an offer from this person, um, it could be like a, what do you call it? Like a promotion. <clears throat> it could be an elevated, I don't know, a new title, money, that kind of a thing, or branching out or your own franchise or throwing in your lot with them and doing something even bigger and better. So the last question I really want to ask is, wow, what is this trying to teach? Pile number two. Pile number two. Again, if you're liking this reading, please do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. What is all this trying to teach you? The skeletons in their closet. What is this trying to teach you, please? The seven of wands. How to defend yourself. How to defend and protect yourself. Stand up for yourself. Um, how to block people, how to, how to draw limits, right? Because this person is an overworker. And so I'm going to say that maybe even this has to do with setting boundaries now so that if you do go in a business together, it's not an issue that they're like, what do you mean you left the laptop at work? And what do you mean you're not working to the night like I am? And what do you mean you're not going to, you know, work all the time that you're off or work on a different aspect of the business because I do it all the time. So you may have to establish really strong boundaries in order to make sure that uh, you're on equal footing and that everything is clear and understood. Communication is vital, but boundaries are even more so, okay? I feel like initially they'll kind of smart about it, but they'll respect it in the long run. The five of hazards, okay. So what is this trying to teach you? Interesting. The five of pentacles is being iced out, being left in the cold and experiencing a loss. This is somebody who's like going through the trash. This could even be like emails that you did or messages that you wrote and deleted. So you want to be cautious about your communication, but also cautious about whatever it is that you're doing with the pentacles. It is very like physical. So this could be, you know, time cards this could be um i don't know like being separated from other people this could really be anything and what you're learning also is commitment and having um connection to spirit these i love these cards you guys they're so pretty so this hierophant is a number five we got a number five right here a lot of changes and fluctuations um also, I feel like you could be pushed into seeking even more resources or being even more resourceful. This could be also teaching you to take a note out of your boss's page and to, 
maybe perhaps work a little bit harder with a similar dedication, but also still have boundaries. So those are the lessons that these skeletons in their closet are trying to teach you. Okay. So much love to you, pile number two. And until next time, namaste. Hi, pile number three. My name is Griselle. It's Psychic MD and I'm here to do your reading. Pile number three, you chose pile number three, <laughs> the third skeleton. If you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Thank you for stopping in. And for those of you that are repeat offenders, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate all of you. Hopefully you'll all find something that is helpful or amusing here. Pile number three, we are looking into skeletons and their closet. So let's do your energy check. And we're going to be using this big old deck. Energy. What is, who is pile number three? Who are you, please? These are not awkward at all to shuffle, as you can see. I have mastered it quite. I'm lying. <laughs> They're terrible to shuffle. Here we go. Pile number three. Who's pile number three, please? Yes. Okay. The Hierophant. Okay. I haven't used this deck in a real live reading at all. Pile number three. You're the Hierophant. You're that person that is deeply connected to the other side. I feel like you get your own messages, intuitive hints. I'm hearing healer. You could be a healer. You could be a remote viewer. I'm checking out these people right here. You could be somebody who reads uh, leaves or tea, teacup leaves, coffee grounds. Excuse me. Let's see. The Hierophant right here. I don't know. I just love everything about like the anatomy thing. It, I'm kind of a weirdo like that if you haven't figured it out already. Now, I feel like with you, you are so connected to spirit that everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. It is plain to see. I feel like you talk about it. You're not ashamed about it. There's nothing um, quiet about it. You could be someone like me, like you wear the bracelets or the telltale rings or uh, you pet rocks like I do. Right. But whatever it is, there is a commitment. And many people see you as being able to kind of get under the surface of everything. And uh, I don't want to say diagnose, but yeah, you could be somebody who does medical diagnosis as well. What do I know, right? Um, I also feel like you could be somebody who really has a lot of insight. Like the depth of the insight is... I heard flabbergasted. So you could leave people flabbergasted. Um, and the changes that people have seen you go through. And I feel like you are somebody who have, you finally peeled yourself to the core. That was a really weird way of saying it. But I feel like people have seen so many changes in you. Um, and you have been so many different people, so many different identities. For some of you guys, you've gone by different names, right? I personally have many names too. Um, some of them misspelled on my birth certificate and some of them people just always misspelled and it's just quite interesting. But I also feel like you expose people around you because um, I kind of feel like these two are drones, right? It's almost like we're in the business world. We are corporate America or corporate wherever it is that you have and we don't really have a mind, but we've got eyeballs. We're going to be looking at everything you do, that kind of a thing. So you could really entice people into kind of spying on you. There's no easy way to say it. Um, the traditionalist people who really want to uphold the hierarchy or yeah, something about like people want to have everything just traditional the way it's always been that kind of a thing. And I don't feel like that's for you. And I feel like your effect on other people is they could experience tower moments. You level people. Now, I didn't even notice a person standing right here. 
It's like you make them shut the hell up and sit down. Pile number three, who is you? <laughs> I think that's really cool, by the way. Um, I, I'm hearing three blind mice. I feel like this person can be like reaching in the dark, trying to understand. You could have people just really scratching their heads and not. And the thing is that they, their tail wouldn't be so bent and they wouldn't be so wound up if there wasn't a lot of merit to what you have to say. Or if you weren't there to be a lesson onto them. Pile number three, this is really interesting, quite unexpected. I'm getting a lot of like men and black vibes. Now this is going to go even weirder because you know, I'm that girl. But I'm going to say also that if you're really connected to spirit and things like that, you could have people like men in black kind of like checking you out. Um, you know, rumor has it that if you are, if you do astral travel and things like that, um, that there are people or entities there to kind of track people like us. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I haven't really delved into it. I don't like the whole astral travel for me personally. I don't, you know, condemn it. Everybody does what they see fit or what they need to. But for me, I'm like, no thanks. <laughs> but I'm going to say that you could have people, you know, official people looking at you, giving you, inspecting you with, um, with their eyeballs, duh. But <laughs> Even people that are like super conservative giving you the evil eye, but also I feel like you, you know, with your information, things like that, you stun them. They do shut the hell up and sit down. I feel like, you know, the traditional keys down here, you have a lot of answers for people. And I don't feel like you're somebody who says, oh, oh, me, me. You're lifting your hand and going, I know the answer to that. And you kind of pop up your chest and you're like, oh, it's blah, blah, blah. No, it's totally different than that. You're not the pick me kind of a person. You are the look, I found my inner core and this is really who I am. And I feel like that's made everyone around you question themselves. Yeah, they, they've questioned you, but I feel like you're used to it. Check out how these candles are burning. This one is like, yep. And this one is not much. Interesting. But anyways, um, yeah, so that is you. If this is you, then this is your reading. Thank you for the sticking with the long intro. Hi, Chihuahua. Sorry about that. But at least it was better. If you guys at all went to pile number one, that was frankly a nightmare. So <laughs> people get really clumsy around you. People could trip over their words. People could drop things, trip over their own feet. Um, I feel like people could just really feel awkward. And that tells me that not only are you like really open and you feel like you've got nothing to hide, that kind of a thing, but I also feel like um, you're graceful in a lot of ways that is quite unexpected to others. Interesting. Okay. So now that we got that, who are you inquiring about? Oh my gosh, eight minutes into it. So sorry, pile number three. Here we go. Who are you inquiring about? The skeletons in their closet. Who does pile number three want to know about? That one definitely popped. Hello. Oh, good grief. Okay, what is what is going on here? <laughs> All right. Focus here. Focus. Grissel and camera. Yeah. So right here, I feel like you are inquiring about somebody who is maybe a little bit romantic, has romantic feelings about you, but it landed sideways. This could be somebody who is like hot and cold in your life. They kind of want to romance you and then they run and hide or they resurface and rinse and repeat that kind of a thing. Quite unsteady energy right here. This person also, the way they're positioned, they kind of get hangman vibes. They kind of want to look at things from a different perspective and they oscillate. The problem is that they don't really trust their judgment or their observations, which really tells me they need to go within to check on themselves and not so much you, right? That's my two cents. You're welcome. Pile number three, who are you inquiring about? Who are you inquiring about? This person could have a dad bod. This person could have... Um, I don't know, yoga practice or meditation practice that they do that is no secret. A dad bod. <laughs> Funny. Okay, this person can also get a lot of attention from the opposite sex or same sex. Actually, both, no matter. This person can 
like to be exalted. Uh, I don't know. Dark, I keep hearing dark web. Interesting. I feel like they have their own demons. Okay. So it's not a surprise that you're here. I feel like this person thrives on attention. This could be an attention whore. Male, female, we don't care. We read energy, not sex. What else do we um, need to know? Who is pile number three inquiring about? This person can want to appear like an angel. Energetically, they want to be like you. Uh-huh. There you are. Look. Look. The Eight of Swords. This person gets caught up in their head all the time. But with their mask on right here, I'm going to say that this person would never admit that they get all up in their head about you. Um, this person wants to move towards you. But you doubt it because the way their energy came up, they oscillate back and forth. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, the problem with you guys is energetically you are not compatible. No, do not mess up my cards. I'm messing up my own cards. Bummer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yep. Okay. Anyways, a hazard, hazard of the business, I guess. So we have here, yeah, this person does like really get entangled in their own thoughts and their own emotions at night. And especially when it's like a full moon, they could have like intuition as well. Intuition about you. Um, I'm getting even like wanting to communicate and they could send you images or like a psychic connection or um, telepathy. But I feel like it's very heart centered, but they are trying to tell you, well, my hands are tight. I don't know what to do. Well, they just can't make up their own damn mind and they are slow about it. But even though they're slow about it, this person does want to make you an offer. This is the actual king of pentacles, but they feel tied up about something. Okay. So let me check this one thing. Kind of feel like that falls into the rest of the reading. But what else do we need to know? Why are they tied up in their head, please? Okay, you're not in communication. You're not in communication. You have left them out. They've left you out. Also, this is about um, being in an environment where people try to sink you. These crabs can, you know, jump, jump. Uh, grapple to get on top of each other and try to climb out of situations and they will continue pulling each other out right when they're on the brink so they won't allow any any of their mates out it's like they're all going to sink they're all going to freeze they're all going to feel left out in the cold and um, yeah you're in separation from this person let me get my gorgeous cards out of here I can't believe I messed them up already I'm so bummed anywho neither here nor there Pile number three, what do you think is being hidden? That should be interesting. Dun, dun, dun. What does pile number three think this person is hiding? The skeleton in their closet. Oh, gosh. One moment, please. Son of a gun. I'm telling you. This person can feel really, really clumsy. I wasn't dropping anything until your read. So, yeah. You feel like this person is in the middle of manifesting. They're just not telling anyone. They're very private about what it is that they want to birth into the world, bring into the world. And with all this purple, I feel like you believe that they have a connection. I heard hidden connection with spirit, which is really interesting. They could be a closet spiritualist or just somebody who is very private about things, not really sure where they stand um, or not wanting other people to know. Now, yeah, divine protection right here. And there's a lot of fog. This person works with smoke and mirrors. And I actually heard smoke and shadows. So they could be somebody who does want to like astral project towards you or want to appear in your dreams you could see them in your dreams with this uh, purple color I do feel like it's a very divine spiritual connection but they are confused they are not vibrationally the same okay this person has a lot of passion towards you and for you um, I feel like they could write things about you write songs write books write chapters uh, write poems write haikus all of that stuff right a lot of passion. Seven of swords. You feel, yeah, yep, yep. You feel like they are tri tricky, tricky dick. Tr 
tricky dick I'm hearing tricky dickling you feel like this person is always thinking about the next move like you're authentic okay you're way authentic and this person comes in with energy of or at least that's how you're feeling of I'm gonna pile number three I'm hearing don't let don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. This person can be a strategist. They're going to do whatever it is that they want. At least that's how you're perceiving them. A lot of uh, pulleys and levers and a lot of trick doors. They dress things up to make things look good, make themselves look good. But even here, it's like, I feel like you you feel about them or you think about them that they are so tricky and conniving or cunning maybe might be a better word that they have every strategy planned out they can move like five moves ahead regardless of what move you make and it's almost like this person saying come closer and I will stab your hand if you choose to even you know move any of the chess pieces I'm gonna win it's magician vibes almost. Dark magician I'm getting. Two of swords. So yeah, <clears throat> this person, you feel like this person is hiding that they have to make a decision and they have to make it quickly. They are transforming, but they're transforming undercover. They're transforming in a very hidden manner in a way that uh, nobody ar around them understands or sees because vibrationally now they're not like people around them either. But I do feel like you guys have been in separation and um, I heard the blind leading the blind. <laughs> but I feel like with this moon right here, this is also saying that they're very connected to their intuition, connecting. And with this moth right here, beautiful moth, they could be seeing signs, synchronicities and things like that. But I feel like they're starting to see with a third eye and not really understanding things. <clears throat> yeah, but that's what you are definitely feeling about this person let me I'm going to move these and protect my cards because I already messed up one so what is the truth what are they actually hiding for pile number three the skeletons in their closet what are they actually hiding for pile three what are they actually hiding and if you do like this kind of read please give me a like share comment subscribe I would really appreciate that what are they actually hiding? Their passion. They're actually hiding a desire. Usually I see this uh, Ace of Wands lit, but now all of a sudden I feel like there was, um, in my mind's eye, I guess I saw, like with all this movement, like a candle being blown out. So <clears throat> I feel like they have a lot of passion, but I feel like it's been blown out and they have nowhere to go with it. I heard rekindle. I'd like to rekindle this. Could be somebody that you were partnered with or some. Oh, hello. Stop throwing things on the floor. Um, affiliated with. I'm having like all. Oh, gosh. <gasps> Jumper card. This is not for everybody, but it's for somebody. It could be somebody that you were with, married to. Somebody that you experienced the cornucopia with, even briefly. Somebody who really put up a good show. I feel like you made a great couple. I feel like for most of you guys, it is romantic. Um, I feel like this is almost your twin. In so many ways, shape, and form, you guys magnetize each other. You were almost the same person, identical. And yet there's all of this, like, nube of... Uh, clouds up here and uh you know the quintessential rainbow for this car so the ten of cups what they're hiding is that they feel like <laughs> i don't even like saying these things because it cause it it can cause a thing like limerence if you know but this could be your soulmate your your other half your person your person i guess i can call it that but uh this could be somebody you're married to partnered to somebody you dated but what they're hiding is that they feel like they are identical to you. And maybe that is a dream that they waved goodbye to or want it. Oh my goodness. For some of you guys, this person, this person, um, 
<clears throat> could have married someone else. Yeah, because I feel like almost like you guys are twins now, identical, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, we're saying bye to the past because we married or we, you know, committed to somebody else, that kind of a thing. And that's what they're actually hiding is that they're supposed to be waving to, you know, <clears throat> goodbye to the past with their new person. And yet here you are in focus. Your connection is unwavering. It is undeniable. Um, I feel like they do think about you at night. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if you know what I mean. What's the truth about what this person is hiding, please? What's this person hiding? The skeletons in their closet. Uh, uh, uh. Well, there has been a massive shift, a massive change for them. And I'm not surprised. I feel like they are going through a great awakening. I feel like they could be going through a dark night of the soul. Um, major transformation. And I feel like you have undergone this major transformation. The twin that you once were. All right. That's not you anymore. That's how they recall you. But they can't forget your connection. Now, what's interesting about this connection is that now they are going through their own dark night of the soul. And that's why we have the two of swords right here. Uh, and you're right. Your instinct, your intuition is right. They don't know what to do with this. They're ready to make a big, big change. But they feel like they really can't. There's a connection to someone else. Okay, this right here is... I don't know if you guys can see it. And I know this reading is a little bit like wild, but if you've been here with me, then you're probably used to it. I feel like this is like a mermaid's tail. Let's do a little bit of candle wax reading. Why? Because we can. Because we can. Let's look here. I need a cameraman. Anybody want to volunteer here? Okay. Look at all this wax. Now... First thing that I'm getting is that mermaid's tail. I feel like with the mermaid being featured, the tail right here wrapping up and all of that <clears throat> and the body being here, I feel like you are very free flowing, but you're very much a siren to them. This is stating that you've undergone all the changes that they're <clears throat> currently going through and they have to make a decision. Um, so everything in your gut and you guys are definitely connected. Your intuition is on point. I don't feel like you're entertaining this at all. This is like the only thing bright here. <clears throat> it appears and I feel like you're doing a lot of introspection and self-reflection and growth to be so focused on them. I don't feel like you are focused on them, just to be honest. You're definitely focused on what you got going on here. Um, mm hmm. I feel like they have a lot of skeletons in their closet, a lot. I mean, I didn't even, you know, I just put those out just because. But now I'm looking at the skeletons and it's like they haven't told anybody this. And, um, yeah, they're trying to like bury everything and have like a really pretty picture. But they're starting to see even the skeletons being buried. His leg is buried by the, the wax right here. <clears throat> and something about the wax, I feel like they're buried their secrets are buried so deep that they feel wax like, you know, when you go to a wax museum and they're lifelike and it seems like they're real people. Or if you are a conspiracy theorist, um, you know, and you go to wax museum and some of them are people that are literally somehow encased in wax. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen a couple of TikToks like that. They're kind of fascinating, but anyways, I feel like they are really encased in wax. Um, and the wax being like, you know, they got to be a little bit slippery, but a little bit frozen. Not really. It's not who they are. Fundamentally. I feel like they're going through dark night of soul. Midlife crisis. It could be at any age. I don't care. Back to the twins. They miss having that freedom. And it's not just freedom of having like a new relationship or a connection, but it's freedom to stare into somebody's soul and really understand and know them. And they miss that. They miss that connection. Now I hear somebody in my head saying, well, then, you know, if they miss it so much, why don't they do something about it? But <laughs> look, apathy. 
this person has presumably everything that they want. They've got a table. They've got glasses of wine. They've got really nice glasses that it would appear. A beautiful chair. It looks a little bit like royalty, but also that table looks a little bit destitute. <laughs> now we have a cup being um, offered and this person wants nothing to do with it. So whatever is dead, they don't want it. It is died. And I feel like what is ending for them <clears throat> is their old self their old connection, the connection that they're currently in there, that's dying away. Um, with the death card, that's definitely changing. And with all the gold right here being featured, I feel like they are not lured in anymore by glitz and glamour the way they used to. I feel like this person could have been like squirrel. She's got shiny objects or, okay, bear with me. She's got nice boobs or, you know, he's got, you know, a really nice car. He's got a great wallet or whatever, whatever shiny means to you. Um, and I feel like that not only is it disingenuous, but it kind of left them hollow on the inside. I feel like they traded their soul in many ways for property. I'm hearing for things, for material things. And in the end, what does it matter? Because you get to come home to somebody that you are not connected to. Honestly, I would rather be alone. <laughs> I'm totally happy by myself, you know, leading my crazy life, um, than to come home to something that I'm not connected with. And I feel like that's you. But I feel like that happiness was hard earned. Check this out. This just jumped out and it landed reverse. So I have the lovers here. They know that they have to make a choice. Now, typically the lovers is um, a card of being a fork in the road, having to make a choice, right? And with this full moon, I feel like even Friday the 13th is coming up. I don't know when the full moon is, but maybe by the full moon, that's when that decision gets made for them. If they don't make it, it's going to be made for them and that's going to be done. I feel like this relationship has disintegrated like three days to Sunday. That makes no sense, but yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap completely done and over with. It is, I am mummified. It's that wax museum. It's that, you know, it's done over with this commitment. No bueno. But that does not mean that this person is good for you, friends. And I feel like you know that you're not somebody that, not that I try to lecture, I really try not to. But with all of this energy right here, it's a very different vibe. The higher front that you are embodying right here versus what they are. And the reason being is that you've gone to your core. You had dug through many layers. You've done a lot of homework. You have even like chopped off parts of yourself that you never thought you would have um, <clears throat> done away with, right? And I feel like you really know, you don't have a lot of illusions about yourself. You're like, yep, this is a weakness. Yep, this is something that, you know, I wish I could do better or I should have done better. And I just didn't, I didn't have strength. I was scared or whatever. And I feel like you come from a place of just like, you're vulnerable and you're happy with all the changes, maybe perhaps that you're making. You could be also um, content with stripping everything down to nothing okay and not like that you guys but um I want to say like a simplified life and living life in such a way that it is extremely authentic like I don't think that you ask for a lot I don't think that riches and beautiful things and you know we all enjoy luxuries I'm not gonna lie I love you know I love luxury but in the end I'm really okay with like a couch that doesn't break my back <laughs> and some simple furniture you know would I like nicer stuff yeah sure you know but I'm not gonna bleed over it and it's not my focus um it's just material stuff is gonna be here and gone it breaks it decays it gets outdated but what is lasting is your character your connection to spirit um the downloads that you get from spirit and that's what separates you from this person so with that higher front right there whatever they're committed to with i feel like luxury like the lap of luxury wanting to live a life that promised a lot more than it delivered they were bamboozled they were fooled and this person could be saying you know i'm going through a dark night of the soul maybe i'll do a video on that if you're interested in that let me know um but I feel like this person is even saying, well, I was lied to. I was, I was tricked or I've been had, 
whatever. You know, it's like blame shifting. And in the end, nobody can trick us or I heard shame, shame us. Um, hmm, interesting. They could be experiencing a lot of shame for whatever transpired between you guys. Yeah. I feel like they always look towards you or at you. And also I feel like their partner looks at you or towards you as well. The hanged man. The hanged man hanging no more. Right? <clears throat> Person will no longer be sitting on a fence. That is, you know, period. The truth about what they're hiding is that they can no longer sit on a fence. What's done is done. They have some real major, major endings that they cannot deny. And they're very, very confused, very confused. They might even want to come towards you for advice, ironically enough, right? I feel like this person did you dirty. Yep. They want to be like, why don't you help me? I'm in need or it's really important or, you know, almost like they want to gloss over anything that they've done. Um, they want to kind of rip out pages of your history together. If they did you dirty and left you for someone else or um, you separated, had a bad breakup, anything like that, or, you know, if you guys blocked each other, whatever the case may be, Eight of Pentacles right here tells me that they want to kind of just throw away all of this elbow grease that they put into it and it's like no they have a, a direct responsibility for whatever they've done they signed contracts they said i do or whatever they had plenty of records to make decisions um and yet they want to say you know i didn't even really understand what i was signing when i signed on the dotted line or some nonsense like that it's just crazy friends do not be deceived this person needs to continue undergoing the dark night of the soul um, they, with the Ten of Cups right here, what they're hiding is that they want to, I heard propagation, interesting, not that I know a lot about that at all, but I'm going to say that with the Ten of Cups here, they really want things to grow, blossom and bloom. They want a harvest of joy, of peace, of emotional gratification, emotional fulfillment. The problem is that they're more like this person back here holding a violin. Ah, it's almost like the world's smallest violin playing a sad song for me. Or I forget how that saying goes. But I feel like they want to delve into like self-pity or they want to come towards you with like, look at what happened to me and I've got raked over the coals and I, you know, and I'm sorry, but we were young or I was young or... Um, I just didn't know how to handle it or I don't know what they want to say, but it's, it's a lot of not taking responsibility. End of story. It's this person running clearly with a violin in the middle of what? I mean, it's nonsense. So you want to be aware of that. Um, let them go through whatever they got to go through. That is their deal. Focus on your healing and your growth and your happiness. Whatever gives you joy, allow it to give you joy. I feel like you're not even focused on this person anyways. You are tending to your own garden. You're tending to whatever it is that gives you joy, whether it's allowing things to melt on your skeletons or not. But uh, I think that, yeah, this is going to be the best answer. They want emotional fulfillment, gratification. In the meantime, you have it and you're not looking or dependent on anyone else to give it to you. Why? Because I feel like you've realized with this dark night of the soul that you've gone through um, and you stripped everything away or maybe things were stripped away from you that no one can give you this peace and the sense of contentment. And, um, you know, you have to find that for yourself and it takes hard work and it takes meditation and it takes being honest about where you're at. If you're pissed off, if you're angry, if you're feeling regretful, if you're feeling sad and analyzing why those things are and just kind of owning your parts like, yep, that was my bad. And I should have not done that or I should have chosen differently or whatever the case may be. But uh, you've undergone and put on a lot of elbow grease and nobody arrives. OK, this isn't like your GPS where it's like rerouting, rerouting. You have arrived. It's not that kind of a life. This is a life that you're going to continue growing, going through cycles, right? Um, all of the seasons, all of the things. You're going to experience those, but you have an understanding that everything ebbs and flows. That first you have to kind of like cultivate the land and then you have to plan and zone where you're going to plant. What are you going to plant? Are they helpful or harmful to each other? Is it an invasive type of plant or whatever? And uh, you understand that time energy and effort is put into things and that people have to kind of take care of their own propagation their own land and if they're running around with a 
big old violin in their hands wanting a pity party, then that's on them. I don't think you're going to pay mind to that. I think that whatever they come towards you, because I do feel like there's a neediness, like I want your attention, your affection. I want to come towards you. Um, but it's like jumping from one thing to another. It, this is not somebody who's healed, who's ready for anything. This person cannot offer you any sense of balance when they are imbalanced within themselves. Okay. That's just a fact. So mm -hmm. this person has to kind of experience their own choices, the natural laws of cause and effect, consequences of their actions, those kind of a thing. And uh, I feel like you're doing pretty damn good. So I don't know. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, honestly. And it's not like I'm saying, I hope you understand I'm not wishing anyone harm. But if you rescue somebody over and over and over again, they will continue having the same problem. Okay. You will continue putting blood, sweat, and tears into situations that should be mastered by someone else. If you continue tending to someone else's garden, you will have less time for your own and so on and so forth. And they will not learn the skills. It's not like they're, you know, well, let me learn this. I feel like this is a pity party that they want from you. Ugh, yucky. Follow your intuition. Pile number three, if you are sensing this, you are totally on the money. I do feel like you are like the high priest, high priestess. Mm -hmm. You could appear quite stern. You could appear quite clutchy, like clutching your secrets. I mean, typically this, uh, this high priestess doesn't give anything away. They're in control and they have like, they're privy to the other side of the, the other side of the veil, but they're not going to share it with anyone. Yeah, I think that you're happy with your connection once again with spirit and that you, you know, your hobbies, your weird hobbies. I mean, I like if you have weird hobbies, please share those with me because I am interested. Yeah, but uh, whew. let's see what this is trying to teach you. That was kind of a wild ride. What is this trying to teach you? The skeletons in their closet. What is this trying to teach you? The King of Swords. Cut anything out that isn't headed in your direction, that doesn't have merit, that comes you, towards you willy-nilly, that isn't solid. And I feel like that's even you cutting things within yourself. Um... It doesn't make a difference. It's you're going to do, you know, the lesson is for you to do whatever you need to do to attain the highest good. Okay. And that might sound really, really harsh, but I'm not talking material things. I'm talking if somebody is constantly bringing drama to your doorstep, disturbing your peace, bringing gossip to your table, um, bringing problems that they could easily solve but were they just to give a little bit of attention and thought to it um, onto your shoulders, things like that. I think that you're going to be cutting those off. The lesson here is don't intervene in other people's. Um, oh, gosh, Griselle. <clears throat> other people's karma. I mean, essentially, you could be somebody who wants to, you know, rescue people over and over again. Look, three of swords. This could be somebody that even like broke your heart many, many times and now they're wounded and things have changed and the dark night of the soul is not for the light hearted. It is designed not to torture and torment, but to transform. Okay. The lesson here is that you have learned through the good, the bad and the ugly, but more like heartache, heart pain. You've had to eat liver before. I mean, some of y'all like it, but most of us don't. You've been through a lot of lessons from the heart, a lot of painful, painful lessons. And that maybe started your journey onto this hierophant, this connection to the other side, to spirit, to source. And what you're here to learn is that pain is a great motivator. Allow other people to experience their own 
again, their own consequences. I heard eat your heart out. And yeah, I don't, I don't think that way. My brain doesn't think that way. Um, I think that we have a very toxic revenge, superficial, um, culture, I guess. Judgment. Mm -hmm. This judgment is going to blow people's minds. Pile number three, it's going to blow that person's mind. They cannot even begin to conceive what it is that you're connected to. Um, the level of peace that you have. I feel like they could have had people also who passed away recently. But this judgment tells me that you're not for the faint of heart. You may look beautiful. You may look dainty. You may look like a tree hugger. But that shank will come out and you can cut a bee at a moment's notice. I don't think that you're afraid of that. And that's what this is stating. It's like, you know what? If people are causing you pain, if a work is causing you grief, headaches, I feel like you're going to do away with that. And that is the lesson here. Last couple of messages. Apologies for, I'm going to rein myself in and not do long, long reads. Just not today. The Wheel of Fortune. The lesson here is that things are improving. The more that you stand in the center, the less you go round and round and round we go, right? Things are improving for you. There could be an air of showmanship about you as well. And I feel like that's part of the lesson. It's like everybody has cycles that they go through. But the bullseye is staying centered. Um, find your equilibrium. Stick with it. Things that throw you out of sync. Get rid of it. That kind of a thing. The page of cups. You could have an apology coming towards you. What are you going to do with that? There's a brain right here. Oh, goodness. No more cards. This is all I can do. Five of wands right here. Yeah. So I feel like this could cause a lot of battles. The battles with you, with them. And this is like almost like a test. This is a test. Emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. Mm-hmm. But everything is vibration. Everything is frequency. And I feel like you are no fool. Even with the, um, if you guys know me at all, you know I was going to head that way anyways. <laughs> with the frequency, with the emergency broadcast system that, you know, the test that they did recently, a couple of weeks ago. And that whole nine yards. Everything is vibration. You are not in alignment vibrationally with that person. That person has a lot of mess to go through. You've already undergone your own mess. And you have come out through burned clean to the other side. Okay. Allow people to battle and, and arm wrestle and fight over legs, arms, hands, whatever the case may be. Allow them to do whatever it is they got to do. And it might be an internal turmoil for you because there's a deep connection. But things will go a lot faster if you allow this to transpire. And the last card for you, I have the Knight of Swords. Mm -hmm. I love these cards. You guys look at my cards. Okay, so Knight of Swords is going to be somebody in the military, somebody quick to respond, somebody who takes no prisoners, somebody who maybe might act in haste, not have enough information, somebody who could be a bully. Because this person is trying to bulldoze or over people um, and maybe even hold you hostage metaphorically, okay? Hmm. They are armed, but this person, I mean, is looking good, looking good in uniform. <laughs> he's got a cigarette in his mouth. I don't know what's going on here. He got his hat. I think he's got a lupa. Let's see if he has a lupa. Uh, I even know what that is in English monocle it looks to me like a monocle highly decorated so anyways this person could just be a natural warrior if they had a past life they were definitely a soldier okay but the knight is just a knight okay quick fast energy you friend are a king if you are still here then uh thank you so much let me know what you think of the reading much much love to you until next time namaste